Hello everyone, it's Michael from Mirrors of Consciousness and creator of the Orbifold Tarot. I'm coming to you today to do a short video on the basics of working with the Orbifold Tarot. I actually thought I'd do a, a short video series that breaks breaks things down some, down a little bit step by step so that it's uh, partly easier for you to find the material you're looking for, the, the aspects that you're looking for, and it makes it also a little bit easier to revisit uh, certain parts that, that you might need to go over uh, more than once as you need, uh, rather than searching through a longer video for exactly what it is. So this particular video is going to be on just the elements and each of the qualities of the elements because the elements are really probably the most important part of this particular tarot deck. Uh, the elements are always an important factor in most tarot decks. Not everyone necessarily focuses on the elements. Sometimes it's uh, more of a background aspect in the reading or uh, a background aspect of the structure of the deck depending on who's created it uh, and what the creator's intent was. Uh, for me, it, my style of reading tends to be based first on the elements. I'm usually first looking at what are the elements and then what are the numbers and that's a good little hint on how to work a little bit later with the Orbifold that video coming soon. But the elements are crucial. The elements are really an important part. And while the elements are a part of the entire deck, it may be easier for the start of this process to go through the elements just in half of the deck, the minors, where the elements are, uh, are alone. They're, they're pure, they're not combined in any way with other elements, and, and they appear uh, on their own. So the four elements are, as many of you I'm sure are already aware, are air, fire, water, and earth. The very basic keywords to those four elements, for me, are uh, thinking and intellect for air, doing and action for fire, feeling and sensation for water, and being or experience for earth. To go a little bit deeper into air, air is the least dense of the uh, four elements, so that's actually why I go in that order from air through fire through water to earth because I'm going from most uh, subtle to most dense. Um, other systems sometimes go in a different order and that's perfectly fine. It actually makes a lot of sense to go in other orders, but this is the order that works well for me in understanding and therefore I hope in, uh, in you understanding uh, also the, the, the way that the elements develop. So, air is not only the uh, element of thinking and intellect, but it has really to do with nearly everything to do with the mind. So, it's not only thinking and intelligence, but wisdom, um, to some degree creativity, humor, the speed of the mind. The mind can be extremely quick, like air. It, it, it doesn't really have a lot of resistance. It can move even my hand moving through air uh, is very quick there's no resistance to it whereas if if my hand were moving through water there may be a little bit more resistance or if my hand were digging into the earth there would be even more resistance so that's that's what I mean by least dense or most subtle to most dense or least subtle at earth um, the air element also has to do with communication and speech and sometimes the relationship between people because usually we're um, we're interacting with each other through speech and through communication which doesn't necessarily have to be through the voice uh, it can also have to do with 
emails and texts and um, other forms of communication, even nonverbal communication, body language. Uh, again, you know, my hand likes to, to move through the air. My, my hands are very, uh, I'm a handsy talker, so um, the, my hands are, are part of the air element uh, in my situation. That doesn't necessarily, isn't necessarily the case for everyone, but the communication is that key idea, key theme there. Even ideas themselves are um, mostly of the air element, to some degree, fire. Two, speaking of fire, moving on to the next element, fire is a little bit more dense. It's still kind of abstract as an element. You can't, um, you can't weigh fire, you can't measure fire in a lot of the quantifiable ways that we measure things. Fire is most linked in terms of um, states of matter. Fire is plasma. It's most linked to plasma. So fire has to do obviously with heat. And uh, with that heat, there's action, desire, doing, will, drive, power, all of those kind of hot descriptors to the way that we live our lives. Um, usually when someone is saying that they lack drive or they lack power, though they are actually saying in some ways that they lack heat or they lack fire uh, in themselves. And so inspiration or ideas um, that spark of uh, an, a, a fresh idea can be associated partly sometimes with air and sometimes with fire because it's, it's an ignition, it's light. Uh, fire is also associated with light and in a way light is kind of in between fire and air. Light travels through the air but it is created by fire or the fire um, essence, the fire quality. Um, fire is also the element of transformation. Fire is what transforms the subtlety of air and, and turns the subtlety of air into the density of uh, water and earth. So, and the other way around too. So fire is also the same thing that transforms earth uh, or, or solids and liquids into gases. Yes, of course, gases don't have to go through the fire stage, um, but it's a, a really important part. Um, matter, matter and non-matter really transform through the element or the quality of fire. Um, and not only does fire transform things, it also destroys things. Um, and so it's a part of that cycle of transformation and destruction and creativity to a large degree. Creativity, though, is also kind of the intermediary quality between fire and water. Water is very nourishing. Uh, it's soothing. And so uh, creativity is a little bit in between that nourishment and that growth process of, of, of uh, water, the, the nourishing uh, of water that is associated with growth. Uh, and then the ideas, the drive, the desire, the will to create something. Um, so creativity is kind of, if you, if you wanted a keyword for the in-betweens, creativity is kind of the keyword for in-between fire and water. Speaking of water, water is the element of uh, not only creativity, but feeling and sensation. Those were the, the, that's the main theme of, of water. Uh, water is also adaptable. It changes. It, it's not the same kind of change that fire was of change, but water is of kind of being malleable and, and being able to adapt and change to the situation. And a lot of uh, water's strength is in that adaptability in being able to flow 
back and forth between different things. Its movement is, is uh, slower. It's similar in a lot of ways to air. It is movement. Air and water have that in common of movement. But air is quick uh, and it's kind of unobstructed and it's a little bit all over the place. Air, air can really go everywhere. Water can also go everywhere, but it has a little bit more density to it because it's less subtle. It has a bit more density to it and it takes a little bit more time to flow and change and move. And so it's therefore also more fluid in that movement. Whereas air's movement is a little bit more erratic all over the place. Um, so uh, anyway, so water is that movement, adaptability, um, and as feelings and sensation, uh, water is emotions in, in general, although there are fiery, airy, and earthy emotions too, but it, water governs the emotions. Uh, in particular, water governs love. Not just the love between uh, lovers, not just uh, sexual or romantic love, but also the love of family, community, um, coming together with people, friendship, uh, those those aspects are associated with water. So when water cards come up, often they have to do a lot with um, the relationships that we have with, well, all of the cards have to do with the relationships we have with people and with ourselves. But water has to do with the interpersonal, the, the feelings of, of, of the relationship that we have with other people, how we feel about people, how they feel about us. Not what they think about us, not what we think about them, but how we feel about them. Um, so water is also receptive. It's, it's somewhat absorptive. It collects things. It's a collector. Um, in that sense of collecting, water is also associated with uh, the intuition and the subconscious. Also, again, kind of like uh, air, water is, is in that way also associated with the mind, but it's not, not the conscious, the, the fore part of the mind. It's more in the background of the mind. And as an absorber, water is kind of collecting all the different impressions that are coming in from around you. Um, that maybe you don't register on a conscious level. The various sounds that happen around you, the various sensations, maybe uh, some of the ways that um, people touch you that you maybe are not aware of at the time, not just in physical touch, but in the ways that people say things that maybe you, you didn't react to or you didn't register, maybe you didn't hear it, but at some level the subconscious did hear it. And so those impressions are collected stored in the subconscious and they become over time also part of um, intuition. Not that necessarily those impressions are part of intuition always, but intuition has a, an aspect of uh, the unconscious or the subconscious. Um, as a collector and as an absorber, um, this is also the quality that, that moves from more fluid to more solid. So as we collect more and more things, we not just things as in objects, but um, as we as we collect um, sensations, experiences, etc., um, that collection becomes more dense over time, and then as a result, that's earth. So that's in a way why. I say that Earth is experience. Some, some people may not agree with me and say that Earth is experience, but um, in, in the sense of collecting and gradually densifying, um, that is experience. That is, uh, that, that process is generally what we term experience. So Earth is being and experience. And it's certainly the element of solidity, where, where uh, water was fluid, uh, fire was hot, 
air is very moving and, and dry and quick and uh, earth is solid. Earth is um, the kind of people that you so that you meet uh, who are earth people. They're a rock. They're they're kind of the hub uh, of of a social group or of a community that people always come back to, that people always refer to. They're in that sense also a resource. So earth is your personal resources, but it's also in communities. What are the resources? Resources in terms of material, but also resources in terms of people. What are those solid, stable people that are like a rock, a touchstone uh, to the community? So, uh, like I said, Earth is substance, solidity. Um, it's also persistence, steady, easy persistence. Earth is the slowest moving of the elements. It doesn't change a lot. It can change a lot, uh, and when it does, those changes are usually more permanent, most permanent. Uh, whereas with uh, water or air, the changes are, uh, can, they, they can still change quite a bit more. They're, they're, they're malleable. Uh, the changes that occur with fire are also relatively permanent. When you burn something, when you burn a log, it's not going to change back into wood again very quickly. So there's a relationship there. Wood, uh, a log, it's a solid. So in this case, it would be considered earth. So there's a relationship there between fire and earth. Um, so earth is... Um, the, the resources, the solid, um, it's also, and it's the most enduring, um, it also serves as a support. So what are your supports? What are your emotional supports? What are your uh, physical, actual supports? So this is where often, you know, often in tarot, uh, earth or the pentacles, the coin suit, is related to uh, home, money, practical. That's another aspect of Earth. Earth is very practical and pragmatic. Um, but coins, coins are usually associated with, with money and, and shelter and those kind of mundane things of Earth, uh, of, of life. Um, I don't think they're so mundane. A, a roof over your head and clothes on your back and money in the bank are pretty important. Um, but it extends beyond that. It's also the solidity. Where's your base? Where is your base? Where's your ground? And this is a really important aspect, not only in terms of day-to-day -day life, very important, uh, but it's also really important in spiritual life and the spiritual pursuit. If you have no ground to grow up from, if you have no base, if you have no solid foundation to grow spiritually from, then you may wind up being very lost. Uh, you could get some very extreme spiritual insights up in the air realm or in the fire realm, um, but without that base, you may get lost. I'm not saying you necessarily will, but that's fairly likely. So that's an overview of the elements. Uh, coming back to the, the basic quality of each one, air is thinking, the mind, the intellect. It's the quickest moving of the, of the elements, and it's probably the most changeable. It, it can change back and forth. Fire is doing or action. It also has to do with the will, transformation, um, heat in general. And it's also very quick. Fire is uh, extremely quick, but, uh, but it's a little bit slower than air. It's not as malleable. Uh, 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 it doesn't have as much movement as air. And the changes that it creates are usually quite a bit more permanent than air. Water is feeling, intuition, sensations, the, the background of the mind, the emotions, the um, sensations in the body and your feelings and 
uh, interpersonal relationships, the, the how you feel about people. That's water. And then earth is the most stable. The, the foundation, um, the ground from which you grow, it's being and experience. So with those principles in mind about uh, each of the four elements, we can then from there go on to uh, combining, seeing how the elements combine, uh, which will be uh, soon. But first, I'd like to go through a little bit more detail about each of the elements in the stages from 1 to 10. So there's your overview of the four elements. Um, if you like, you can always review this video. And I'm going to stop here and make a second video and break things up uh, with the ACE 10 for each element. Um, probably actually just the ACE 10 in principle, no particular element. So I will talk to you soon.